Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're doing another one of our pandemic projects. I take on all comers and that's what this one is today. This is a circa 1990 something, early 2000s. It's a South Bend Condor. And uh, these reels are, are lower price, but that doesn't mean that they're bad reels. Uh, these reels will always do what you're intending them to do. Uh, this is a 40 size reel. It's got a line capacity of uh, 230 yards of 10 pound test. This one's a little sluggish, uh, and that's typical of what you'll find when you buy a, uh, a value priced reel is that somebody has uh, uh, used it, and uh, not to say abused it, but uh, they haven't taken care of it. And their, their thoughts on that is it probably cost about as much to um, to have the thing serviced as it would to go out and get a new one and after a while when the reel fails that's exactly what they do they make it disposable but uh, there's no reason this reel should not be serviced uh, certainly by you if you're viewing it uh, there's uh, no reason in the world why you can't take that challenge on and make this reel last a long time it's already lasted a long time it's probably 15 20 years old already it's a graphite reel made in china but uh, again not a bad reel so uh, let's show you how to take it apart and service it. We'll deal with the, the spool last, but we have dry washers up there we're certainly going to, uh, to work on. But right now we want to get to the core and, and just do a little bit of a body and cleanup. Now this is not turning. That usually means that this is a screw and handle, and if you reverse the handle, you can remove the handle. And that's what we're doing here. Just a couple of turns in a clockwise motion is going to take that handle out. You'll notice a couple of things while I'm doing it. The folks that watch this regularly probably get tired of hearing me say it, but I wear a protective glove to keep stuff off my hands, and I also use a parts tray to keep track of all of the stuff I take off the reels so that I know where they are when I go to put them back. There's been a lot of great suggestions that have come in uh, from uh, viewers, things like using egg cartons, for, for example, to keep track of your parts. Uh, some folks like to lay them out on a non-slip mat uh, in the sequence they took them off and then simply reverse that sequence when you uh, when you go to reinstall. Uh, if it works for you, go right ahead and do that. Uh, I'm uh, accustomed to using my parts tray and uh, I kind of rely on my memory, but I also rely on pictures, that is the video here, to uh, help me if for some reason I look in the parts tray and there's a piece in there that I haven't reinstalled or haven't done in the right sequence, I can always go back to the video. So I would encourage you, use your cell phone camera, use a, a, a stationary camera like this one, digital camera, uh, use, your, use a video camera, whatever you want. But take pictures along the way. You don't have to take the full videos, but take pictures along the way. And when, uh, when you go to reinstall, if you're stuck, you have your uh, reference point. I usually say get schematics, but uh, Schematics for this reel are a little hard to find. Um, I think that's probably because, in my opinion, it would probably have been a, a mass production run of, I don't know, 100,000, pick a number. And uh, after that uh, run was done, no parts were available for it. So uh, you didn't have access to uh, the schematics for that in terms of going to get the uh, replacement parts. This is a South Bend reel. So South Bend's got a rich history. It's been around for a long, long time. And somewhere in the, uh, the 1970s, I believe, South Bend was acquired by um, Gladding Fishing Reel Company and uh, Fishing Line Company. We did a little video on Gladding. And then Gladding went bankrupt, and I believe somebody bought the the South Bend trade name. So this is what we got. This is why it isn't working. We have a bunch of dried grease on the uh, uh, main gear. We'll clean that up. A rather simple design, and this is always fun. You'll learn something from this one now uh, if you haven't seen some of the lower end real designs in the past. But there's a kind of a unique anti-reverse in this one. It's uh, driven by a little spring on the back of our main gear here. And I'll show you how to reinstall that so it works properly uh, after the service. So you can kind of see this way, you'll see that there's a, a bump up spring there and that, uh, that's got a place that you need to be particular about. Okay, while I'm doing that I'm checking the, the teeth of the gear. They seem to be fine. I didn't notice any roughness when I was turning this. The rest of that gear seems okay. So we're going to go and uh, 
remove the axle shaft now. There's a little screw that attaches to the axle through what's called the cross wind block. Put that into my parts tray and once you remove that and hold the cross wind block you can remove the axle. Then you can remove the cross wind block. Just going to use a little carpenter's all for that. And we can see this is very dry so when you got a dry piece of metal on a plastic case it's kind of going to turn slow. And that's what's going on here. All right, we're going to remove the rotor then, get up top for that last part. And there's not much going on under here at all, but uh, we're going to go take that off nonetheless. There's a little hold down screw here. And then we'll take a 10 millimeter wrench, if I can find my 10 millimeter wrench. And that should be this one. Not it's the 11. Oh well. Pardon the interruption. we we'll find the uh, next one up here. There we go. And this one comes off in a counterclockwise direction. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they, they are reverse threaded. So if that's the case, you want to pay attention to that so that you know when you go to reinstall how that, uh, how that does. So. There's a keyway here holding it onto the shaft and a pretty simple device up here for the engagement to uh, I'm take that off. There is a ball bearing in here. So what we want to do, we'll do the full service on this one. Why not? I believe there's a ball bearing in there. We'll take this collar off. This is your anti-reverse cog. We have a steel shaft here. We don't have a brass shaft. That's an indication of the, the uh, components that are used inside of this. They're less expensive, which is why it makes the reel of value price real. And then we can pull the whole thing up. And we do not have a ball bearing in here. We have a bushing. Now, as crazy as this may sound, if you wanted to hot rod this reel, you could replace this with a uh, like size bearing. But uh, that's not done here. What it has enabled me to do though is, is get this off to clean. So we'll take the grease out of that channel there. And we're going to re re-grease this. I'm going to use fishing reel grease for this. I get that question all the time. What kind of greases should I use on it? Well you should use fishing reel grease on it. I'm going to slide the collar up here because that will move. I'll put some grease behind the collar as well. Then slide the bushing down. Make sure that channel is clean there. I'm just going to use a cotton swab to do that. While I have that out, it's an easy access point to get rid of the old grease that's on the, the holder there. Put this back in. Put the collar back on. Now, there's two sides to a collar. One's got that flat side. You want to make sure that that's installed, in this case, where that anti-reverse lever is going to be moving. That's this piece. If you didn't put that in right, it would be an obstruction. So uh, you want to make sure you get that right. These are the things you should note as you're taking these reels apart. And if you didn't note, if you ran into trouble, that's where the pictures are going to help you uh, later on. I'll just go put these screws back in. And those of you that follow my YouTube know me and those screws don't get along. But uh, trying with this magnetic tip screwdriver here. And eventually I do get it. So do the other one. So you really don't need to go up under this rotor if you have this reel because other than a bushing. The only reason you would want to go under here is to uh, take care of a broken part. So note to, to yourself if, you're, if you've got this wheel and you want to tune it up. Okay, I finally got these in. Thank you for your patience. And 
and we have our click rotor goes on and here's where you can see how it intersects with the the rotor so the question then is how does how do you make that work and that's what's on the main gear so let's go ahead and put the, the rotor back on remember we took it off in a counterclockwise fashion traditional so the old righty tighty you just tighten it back up by reversing that process and using your 11 millimeter wrench there give it a spin to make sure that it's spinning okay which it is there's a set screw that we had here so grab that set screw now these are just plain steel because they're working on my magnetic tip so Again, the higher price reels, you may find uh, stainless screws in there, which wouldn't rust. And one of the things that you find out with the folks that uh, use these reels is that a lot of times the pieces and parts are rusted. A little bit of dirt behind the wings here it doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt to take the dirt off at this point while you have the spool off. So I'm going to just use a little bit of penetrating oil there, grab a cotton swab and just get the dirt out of that channel. Dirt is the enemy of reels, doesn't matter if it's a $25 reel or a $250 reel, uh, they are your enemy. While I have that spray out, I'm also just going to put a little bit of spray into the two sides of the bale. The bale's working. We saw that before when we were testing. There's no need to do anything beyond that, but uh, you do want to uh, take advantage of the, the service time to go do that. If you wanted to, you could put a drop of oil in there. If you're using oil, please use fishing oil like uh, Real X, which is what I tend to use on my, uh, my pieces. Okay. We noticed this one was dry and we said that's probably why, one of the reasons why the performance is deteriorated. So let's go ahead and grab some, some grease and get it on that outer rim. That should make that work better. Also on a stud here, so you want to get a little bit around the stud. And it doesn't hurt to put some on the bushing even though bushings by their nature, in this case being a plastic bushing or petroleum based bushing, it's kind of self-lubricating. Drop the stud down to the bottom. Get the cross wind block. Again, here's another example where the only grease in there is the grease that's dried. So get that out of the channel. Put some new grease in. Then mount that to the bottom stud there so that it looks like this. Then you can put your axle shaft back in. Pretty sure we're going to be able to do that. Let's do the main gear just in case. So remember that spring. We were talking about that before. There's a little spring here. Just kind of try and point it up with the pick. There's a slot right through that little lever. We were saying, how does that work? Well, it works off the spring on the main gear. And you've got to eyeball that spring going into that slot. And you'll know you got it. If the anti reverse is working. In that case, I didn't get it. I'm not having much luck there, so let's try this again. Probably should have done it without the. Uh, cross wind thing attached. There we go. So that's it. You have to thread that, uh, that in place. Now you got to rotate that around again because I have this, I moved the stud the bottom. Okay, so studs back on the bottom. Take the cross wind block and remount that. Grab our axle, bring that down and through. So this is a zero ball bearing reel. So again, when you're looking at a value price on a particular reel, uh, that's some of the compromises they make. They, they don't put the ball bearings in there. It saves them, I 
guess, a couple of pennies on each reel, and that adds up in terms of what the cost of the reel is. It doesn't mean that the reel can't be effective. A lot of the reels from the, the early days of spinning reels did not have ball bearings in them. That was a, a uh, development later, and bushings certainly work fine. So what's the disadvantage? Well, if you heavily fish this reel, like if it's your daily driver, eventually the, the pieces are going to give way and uh, the wear will make the reel sloppy. So those bushings uh, do tend to wear over time. But again, if this is an entry level reel, if you've got it in a cabin, if you've got it down at the beach house, um, out at the lake, whatever, it's only used occasionally. Maybe it's just used for uh, an occasional angler who comes up to visit then uh, it's a good reel. It's a 40 size reel, so it's going to be pretty versatile. People ask me what the, uh, the best size reel is. I tell them a 40 or a 50 because it can meet so many applications. You can cast from shore, you can drop from pier, you can drop it from a boat. Uh, and uh, it has, uh, it can be inshore ocean, it can be river, it can be deep lake. And so it has a lot of, uh, a lot of uses to it. I mean, uh, it's certainly not going to be something that you're going to use for for a small freshwater fish where you would possibly want a lighter and ultra light reel but if you're looking for a general reel the 40 and the 50 size reel is almost perfect as an introductory reel and then as you learn that the types of species that you're targeting um, what uh, what seems to be the the fight and the poundage of the fish that you typically catch, then you can adjust accordingly. You can go smaller or you can go larger. Uh, again, if, you, if you're concentrated on doing ocean surf fishing, uh, for the most part, you probably would go larger. And uh, if you're fishing off a pier or boat intending to get smaller species, then, uh, then you can go smaller. But uh, again, it's a nice versatile reel. So now we'll put that handle in. We'll make sure everything's working. Oh yeah, it turns a lot easier. And we have that anti-reverse. We want to make sure we have the anti-reverse in place, which we do. It's not an infinite anti-reverse. It's a lever-driven one. So let's just go finish this project then by doing the spool up top here. There's a C-clip that's mounted in a little groove. You have, uh, it's a spring, hold on to it. And you have two little access points here. And then I just like to pull the whole stack out Make sure that the cavity is clean. Now, if it's used in fresh water, it just generally doesn't get too jammed up. If it's uh, used in salt water, a lot of the spray gets behind these and uh, causes a problem. In this case, we have hard washers, so you don't need to do anything with those hard washers. And the sequence to that is a hard washer, a round washer, a second hard washer, an eared washer, just missed the groove there, there you go, it's fits in a slot, then this white one's up top, I'm not sure why they changed the colors of them, somebody may know that, and then when you go to reinstall the clip, do not put the tab end right at the clip, try to find the midpoint in here, just work it around, Watch it, it can spring if you don't get it right. There you go, that's the answer there. That clip doesn't do anything but hold the, uh, the drag stack in place. The, uh, the work of tensioning the drag is done by the drag adjuster knob here. And we'll just go put that on. Folks ask me what I do with these reels when I'm done with them. Uh, well, this one came as part of a flea market find where I got a whole lot of reels thrown in the box. Uh, it's below the level where I would actually repair and resell. So I find children that uh, are entry level anglers where this reel would fit perfect. And I give them a reel and uh, let them uh, go knock themselves out. So this one's going to be doing some nice fishing out there. It's a smooth operator. It's all greased up and ready to go. It's uh, simple enough in design that it's not going to... Uh, uh, suffer from too many mechanical breakdowns. It's hard to break a plastic uh, bushing. Uh, if you had a, uh, a metal bearing in there, it might rust. Uh, it's hard to break a graphite case. It's kind of built like a tank. It's a very solid box here. You're not going to bump anything or shatter a case that way. 
So about the only thing you'll get in trouble with is if you slam the bail into something. So uh, that's it. So uh, I hope that this helps you if you have a South Bend Condor, if you have another reel similar in nature. Uh, this will certainly show you how to tune that up. Uh, if you have a question on reel repair, if you're working on something and got stuck, well, ask the question. doesn't matter what the video is about. I'll try and help you with the response to that question. If you have some reels that need to be repaired and you're afraid to do them yourself, well, yes, I do work on reels uh, as part of what I do. And uh, send an email to my uh, uh, email, secondchancetackle at gmail.com and uh, you'll see that at the end of the video on my business card. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe. Please stay safe during the pandemic. Stay well, stay indoors, and um, stay busy. And if you stay busy fishing, fixing fishing reels, all the better. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.